Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the MedBro Show, episode five. I am pretty sure now this is episode five, no question <laughs> about that. Uh, and today we have all three of us back again. When do we not? That's the point <laughs> of the show. <laughs> well, um, we're going to be getting into three new topics this week. And if you guys ever have any suggestions for topics, make sure you guys leave them in the comments down below. We love reading your comments and make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. You can find this podcast here on YouTube. We split it up into three different chunks and on uh, Spotify, you can get it at the end of the week uh, as a full episode. All you only <laughs> so. Spotify. So, what is it called? Before they destroy my um, further my enunciation, let's go ahead and get to the first topic. Shaman, why don't we talk about the topic that you brought here? All right. So my topic is how is it moving from an apartment slash dorm, which has been the situation for a lot of people in college, med school, graduate school, whatnot. How has it been transitioning from an apartment for so many years to now living in your own house for the first time? Obviously, starting out, we've had a, a variety of different living situations growing up. We've always been moving. It's always been from apartments to houses to apartments to condominiums. Uh, townhouses. We've literally lived in every single situation you could live in. Going into what well, the first situation, I earliest that I can remember was a uh, very small house. I think we rented out uh, when I was really, really small. And then I think that was when dad was doing his residency. And then not many memories from that, but it was some kind of like really small single story Apartment. rental home. Apartment. John no, Stanley my no, that was, we also rented a house before that. But bro, you weren't even born. Let me tell my story. <laughs> I don't know where you proved we I have a feeling retroactively off. knew no, this stuff. We first rented a home. Yeah, we first rented a home. How did we go from a home then to an apartment? We rented a home. Uh, it might have been the apartment first, then rented a, a home from an individual when dad Probably was doing his individual. residency. Uh, then we moved <laughs> over. Then we <laughs> the individuals are back. <laughs> if y'all haven't been keeping up with the podcast, Herman has a habit of saying, the "And this thing, individual." Yeah. Well, I was talking to an individual. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to the store and I got groceries from, from an individual. <laughs> These are all factual statements. There's nothing wrong Not with an individual. Um, then I, you know, we moved in, uh, lived with our grandma in, in her single story house for a while. Then we've got our, finally our first home, which was an uh, absolutely amazing home, which we'll get into even in the later uh, part of this podcast where we're going to talk about nostalgia in, in my section. Um, then we lived in a double story home. That was an amazing home awesome house and then from there we had a little area where we went to townhouses single story houses and rented houses and then we got two other houses so i've always been house apartment all this kind of stuff um but for the past i would say eight years now how many years has it been since we went off to college i've been in a very dorm-esque situation first like nine years for you yeah like almost nine years now it's been starting with college dorms which that will be a whole topic in and of itself on this show on this uh, channel one day i want to talk about dorms and crazy stories that happen to dorms and should you live in a dorm um after that i only spent one year at the dorms where i was just like i gotta get out of here and then got an apartment lived in an apartment life throughout college lived in an apartment life throughout medical school and then even when i started residency again right back to the apartment so it's always been like this student lifestyle apartment-esque situation and i'm not really a big fan of it how do you two feel about that uh i initially didn't mind it too much but once you kind of get accustomed or like kind of live in a small area for quite a while it does kind of get very samey like for me living in the same apartment looking at the same bland furniture um in the same one room area for multiple years um especially when you're doing like a lot of studying and stuff and it just becomes very monotonous. Um, it is kind of uh, not optimal to say the least. Like mm -hmm. I would definitely prefer even like a bigger apartment would be better or obviously a house is ideal. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that one thing that we've never done is actually make our environments look good. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think... Even when I moved there, you guys had already had your nasty futons picked from Ikea, nasty little dining table. Like, I had nasty paint colors. Like, it was a terrible environment within. Like, if you decorated that space and made it nice and open feeling, of course, it wouldn't be, like, the, a house. But it would be a little bit more pleasant to look at. I feel like the decor also in all these spaces that we have been in has been shit. 
you know, kind of going off that point, I never understood people that even if they have nice apartments, they decorate them and then they live in them as adults. Like, and they have the means to live in a house, but they prefer to live in a well-decorated apartment. Mm. I never got that. Well, I get it, but personally, that's not for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would much rather than living in a nice apartment, I would much rather buy a house. Um, I think that's like city people. Exactly. That's why I never understood people who preferred, because there are people like, why don't you just buy this house? It's like, and you'll go with the economics and it's better to buy this house. And I'm like, no, I actually just like living in this apartment. Um, yeah, okay. No matter if it's on like a 10th story, it's a great apartment. For me, I prefer the house for the space yeah. and the less repetitive environments, no matter how well decorated. Um, but I know that's a contentious opinion. Yeah, I think looking at the economics of it, a lot of people can spin it either way. For some people, it is more economical to get the house, which we will be doing a future video on, or um, it is more economical actually for some people to put the money that you would put toward a down payment of a house or something like that and invest more on the business side or do some real estate or do something else with the money. That's kind of the logic for some people. So I can see the logic going either way. Um, like you're saying, it's more financially you know, incentivized to go get a house. I think it's different for different people. I think more people in this generation are opting to get apartments. Um, rather than houses. Now that I'm actually in the house, I can say I, it's a much more enjoyable experience in terms of what I've been doing. Like it feels like I'm not stuck in this jail cell situation again. That's how I feel like in an apartment. I know some people even like that. Like they come home, they have their little box um, and you just live there, you go to sleep, you use a little kitchen and do your stuff. It's it's totally different. I guess I'm just more old school. I want the garden, I want to go for the walk. I'm, maybe way too old minded for my age but i just like that traditional feel of like having a house and doing my thing and being able to walk upstairs downstairs have plenty of room for people um i i don't know like what kind of things can you do now living in this house that you couldn't do in an apartment like three yeah, years ago yeah what the hell do you even do that yeah, you like it so no much? technically yeah technically if you look at the technicality of it really what are you doing you're doing the essentially the same stuff you're coming home you're cooking your meals you're sitting down but it, it's different when you're in a home i don't know how to explain it. you want to go upstairs you want to go downstairs you want to go to this room and relax you want to um you know eventually when we do get the backyard i'm definitely gonna get a basketball hoop up and you can shoot hoops in your back yard uh, when your family comes over there's room for them um, it's just more of a homely feel when you entertain guests like they feel like they're coming to a home rather than coming to your like your little jail cell remember when we all got do you in... feel like there's more maintenance of the home than ever? oh yeah that's gonna be an issue do too. you maintain anything I just got it no so he's not this going is, to this it's gonna be terrible a very fresh experience so I'm sure when things start breaking down I'm gonna have not a even lot breaking of down you're just gonna create a mess the main issue is when I have house, I don't worry about things like decorating and this is that. No, it's I as simple I'm not as talking possible. about that. I'm talking about how messy you are. In and what like, way? You let things expire in your fridge. You don't really know how to like scrub things down. I mean, things, gonna be are gonna, things are going to expire when you're medical student second <laughs> or when you're a resident in the ICU and you're you're doing all this work you're going to come home and you're just going to get a meal instead of cooking so something. So sad. Mm -hmm. And nothing meal. expires in your home. Uh, I definitely when and anything cook, my question is what does expiration have to do with a house or an apartment it's just that he's going to take this beautiful place and he's going <laughs> to no he has more square footage to ruin now that's how <laughs> I not with expired it. food though it doesn't change depending on a house or an well, apartment well the whole downstairs is going to stink now instead of just a couple rooms uh -huh, that's a stretch but uh um, okay but you don't notice any different coming here rather than my apartment I remember no, when of we course. did a nice if little you have family. family this is a guy that doesn't deserve a house okay oh really because he doesn't even okay. know what to do with it, right? Okay. If what I would had a house, do? what I, would you do? What again, the hell would you do with it? I know what's happening. You're gonna make it a home gym is a big thing that could never happen in an apartment. Obviously, oh, nice. I agree. Some, oh, for sure. some places have do have a like gym, gym associated with mm -hmm. their apartment, and that's super cool. But especially in like these COVID times where you don't really want to go to the gym, um, especially when there's a lot of that's people true. at that gym. Um, having a home gym is a really safe, huge really bonus. Um, yeah, it's like a huge bonus. Um, I yeah, think people just expand upon that point. I heard a lot of people saying that oh, they miss the actual gym part. They go like, oh, even you were saying like, oh, I like going to the gym. I absolutely hate going to the gym. The only reason that I love going to the gym, like the building itself with all the people and stuff, is the basketball. Now that basketball is completely not going to happen. Everyone's for different. Year. Some people like the environment. 
No, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I just said. Someone like you even said the other day, you like the environment, it keeps you going, keeps you motivated. For me, it doesn't. What what motivates me is my own personal drive. I like to be in my own space. I like to do my own stuff, blast my music as loud as I can. So that's a huge benefit for sure. Yes, so um, that is one thing. Another thing is that the kitchen is much like at my place uh, my kitchen is literally like one countertop in the corner so having, shaman's place is the opposite of this place yeah my place is tiny but having a huge kitchen uh first of all makes food more interesting to eat right you have a wider space well, like i put, said herman's gonna waste you have a designated it. space to eat i don't even have a designated space to eat in, a, in my apartment i don't know how big your guys' apartments are but like where I study is where I where, yeah where I study is where I eat which is where I do everything which is my bathroom which it's is so my you only eat in your I'm bathroom just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. but uh, no, most things are on is, my what I'm just saying your apartment's so sad it's so <laughs> small and so sad it's not that bad but it's pretty bad most things are done on <laughs> yeah one, your apartment is I mean we should go into that it's a one windowed and the window faces a wall like that it's... are walled off like a jail so literally like a jail yeah yeah like a courtyard bad. yeah and then when when i'm trying to sleep in the middle of the night i have some footsteps like banging i don't know what they do uh, in they these do. apartments what are y'all doing at 3 a.m smacking the ground wow. like literally i want to see what the guy is doing up there you don't want to like, see he literally just has a metal pole and he's like hitting the ground <laughs> every like, apartment has had that every apartment like we've what lived are in. you guys doing in the stories up above yeah remember um, when we had the berkeley apartment too we'd all be chilling 2 a.m. All of a sudden, somebody decides to do like P90X. Like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, and what's really funny? Care. What's funny is the noise complaints come from a random dude like me who invites someone over to play a video game, oh, and then then we get the noise complaints coming to my door for one video game. But this guy with a metal pipe upstairs, <laughs> and no one's doing anything. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, speaking of noise complaints, maybe we should go into the SWAT team story now. And that would be a good time. We keep pro prolonging it. Just tell them about it. I, no maybe point. let me get into this in terms of noise complaints. Here's what happens, folks, when you're dealing with shaman. <laughs> stop, I had stop a, I shaman. had no. This was 100. percent They can decide. They can decide themselves. So uh, we were at UC Berkeley. We lived. Me and shaman lived there initially. And then Puni kind of joined us in our little apartment. And what happened was I got out of school early. I was super happy. I got an early day. Came home. <laughs> uh, was totally ready to just kick my shoes off. Maybe game a little bit. Maybe do a little homework. You know, just relax. I start banging on the door, start knocking on, first I start knocking on the door. I'm like, okay, this guy, is, he must be in there. He's supposed to be home. It's his day off. I'm knocking on it. Then it turns to banging. Then I start to call him. He doesn't answer. Then I'm like, all right, is this guy dead or what? And then <laughs> you never know with him because what he does is he naps with his headphones on, which is a very dangerous a Very combo. optimal sleeping patterns. But continue. Like even with the headphones on, you should get notified if someone's calling you. I don't know what settings he has. This like, was way back in the settings. day where phone sucked like but. it's like die in a fire settings or something like that <laughs> on his phone yeah i'd probably be dead if there was a fire and then continue. i go to the window i start banging and guess what happens when you go to a window and you're a bearded shady looking guy <laughs> in uh in a, you know this nice apartment complex you get the neighbor who's a sweet old lady oh she was so sweet but i never had seen her again after this incident <laughs> she calls the police and I don't know what number she called. It wasn't 911. It was like SWAT team. She had it on. It was the FBI. I don't know what she called. The CIA, FBI. She called everybody in. So eventually, eventually, Shaman does open the door and I get inside after extreme banging, like murderous screaming banging because I knew he was in there because I saw his little foot through the window. I was like, this piece of crap. Either he's overdosed on chocolate or something or, or I don't know exactly what he's doing in there. And then I finally get in, yell at him, kind of beat him up a little bit <laughs> not really physically but he got yelled at insane he okay here's why she probably called the police to be honest with you. <laughs> it was quite a bit of yelling uh, you know it, and so after he got totally roasted we <laughs> calmed down we settled down we're chilling and then we hear a knock on the door like, oh, wait that's the funny thing we have a lot of people don't understand we can yell at each other and be pissed at each other and then just start chilling after yeah like so we were chilling minutes. right so like we, we were chilling have, at this point yeah we might have been just like eating or something like that <laughs> then we hear bangs on the door we're like what the hell <laughs> I look in the people and I see this police officer, right? I see this like bald head of a police officer. And he's just like, uh, uh, Oakland police, yo, open up. Because this was in Oakland at the time. 
And then I, right there and then I was like, oh shit, I got to do everything in my possible, you know, ability to not get shot. Um, opened the door and saw this bald headed guy, literally hand on the gun, other flashlight in my eye, uh, saying, uh, excuse me, sir, we got a problem here. And I slightly have the door open. He's like, uh, can I come in? And I literally, the Indian in me says, you're going to take your shoes off. <laughs> I was like, you're going to take your shoes off? I didn't know that. I was like, if you want to come in, you're going to have to take your shoes off. But first I was like, what is going on? I was like, what is going on? Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and this officer. Did you take his shoes off? We'll get to that because that's probably the most important part of the story. Because after this, I was I was mopping the place up. Well, uh, why would you expect a police officer to take his exactly shoes off like, if he has to run after you? Take your shoes what off. What the hell? To the Oakland police, and then uh, I was like, um, "What's going on?" Like, just ask him, like, "What's going?" On? He's like, "Sir, we need you to open the door. We need you to open the door." I was like, uh, "Like, this is exactly what it feels like to have your rights violated." I was just like, "Wow, like, really? <laughs> this guy's just gonna tell, like, you're not even gonna tell me what's going on?" Because I was actually confused. Like, okay, there was a bit, a little bit of yelling and banging, and that was in the back my mind but like not enough to warrant this response <laughs> so i opened the door i was like fine like <laughs> sure you know i don't have anything to hide or anything like that so i opened the door um <laughs> this guy says could you step outside and i'm like and i start putting my again i'm indian as hell so i start putting my shoes on he's like forget your shoes man just come outside like super urgent like really <laughs> emphatic i'm like dude chill i literally was like relax man and i put my shoes on because i ain't going out there without my shoes I walk outside, I look to my left, and what is there? The SWAT team, essentially, all hugging the walls with their guns. Some of these guys had automatic rifles. One guy was carrying a shotgun. Um, and one had, like, a riot shield on his back or something like that. I was like, what is going on? They're all lined up against the wall. And on the other side is uh, uh, lined up against the wall. There must have been, like, 14, 15 people um, just lined up out there, all mm-hmm. armed, ready to go, hands on guns. One guy had, like, a shotgun out, like I said. Uh, and I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> he just, and, and at this time, I did not look like this. I looked, I was like 210 pound, uh, glasses on, wearing the like the nerdiest, baggiest, stereotypical Indian yeah, never stereotypical. clothing. Just standing there like, like huh? huh? <laughs> What's going on? And then, and then this, I don't know what these people were expecting, but when they saw me walk outside and turn the corner, they're like, this guy. Like, well, did we got called in for this? I don't know. Did what we get the, the wrong door? I don't know what the neighbor had told them. I don't know. The description must have been, they're, they're killing him. They're killing him. Yeah, I want that phone call. Can we get that phone call? Yeah, I wanted him? to hear that call. Did they not give me explanation? No explanation so far so then you walk me around this corner and then the second I walk around the corner I see the guys with the shotguns and guns and all that stuff running like charging inside like this mm-hmm. and Shaman's inside maybe Shaman you can tell <laughs> the perspective what you saw alright so first of all I can certify this you know there's all those uh, YouTubers that are exaggerating with their lives and whatnot. this is 100%, 100% Shaman true. certified oh my God, there was certified. literally like a dozen plus officers that swarmed in I'm just sitting there on the bed and I'm like yo what, what did you do? <laughs> yeah he was like <laughs> laying out on the like, bed like this why did they think he was a big, like a yeah. why like, not a threat like why were no they, no, they, they were did. investigating yeah. they did oh. they were investigating everything so I looked outside to the door and I saw Herman go outside I'm like alright these officers are coming in they swarm in literally like the SWAT team go watch like one of those episodes of like I don't know police or whatever and uh, they swarm in. One guy takes the bathroom, starts looking at like in the tub and everything. One guy rushes me, literally grabs me out of the collar, sits me <laughs> down. They're like looking under the bed. They're like looking at like any hostages here. I'm like, what the hell, hostages? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're literally like they're like um, talking about like hostages. Yeah, they're like literally looking everywhere for like I don't know what they're looking for. Maybe like a girl that's no, like, obviously they were looking for somebody murdered and yeah, tied like, up upside down. In yeah, I don't know what kind of call they got. <laughs> yeah, but definitely looking for someone battered and bloody uh like some kind of hostage situation and so they grab me and they're like what's going on here and then um while like five people are still searching every nook and cranny of this tiny apartment um i'm like uh yeah well uh, what happened was i can explain i can explain like, you better do some explaining <laughs> yeah no, no you better start <laughs> and explaining. I'm like, all right, all right, let me explain let me explain and this is when i was pretty like i was a freshman in yeah, we were college. all we were children, so i was pretty young man. so i was like uh well you know um <laughs> Well, you know, my brother and I, we go to Berkeley, and um, what happened was, you know, we were at my, um, my, we went back home this past weekend, um, and he's like writing everything down like crazy, like this is about to be some serious situation. I'm like, we went past weekend, and 
my brother forgot his key at my mom's house. And then when we came here, I'm the only one with a key. And uh, he came Basically without just a told key and started story, yeah. knocking on the door really loudly. And this he couldn't voice get in. So what is this? So, I love it. Um, all that noise was because um, he was <laughs> knocking and trying to get in. And I was like, yeah, well, who was the guy outside the window then? What was that all about? Yelling outside your window. Yeah. I was like, yeah, he uh, went to the other window and he couldn't get in from the front. He's like, okay, okay. And then they finally clicked in like the other officers because this guy was super scared. The other ones, the other guys are like, oh, okay. And then they were like, whatever. It's not been, like not yeah. a big deal, and they left. Yeah, they like separated us about the story. And when they were writing stuff down the whole time, they were time, writing it down literally like this is some kind of hostage. The situation. whole time I was thinking, man, this is gonna go on my so record. Funny. This is gonna suck, but whatever. And they then, never told us what happened. Like yeah, this we, is the first time I'm hearing <laughs> details because every time they just well, they never told me, mom or dad. And then like three years ago, they started mentioning. When I would say, wow, he's like, girl, and Herman would get angry or something here and there. I'd be like, wow, Herman's so angry. And Sean would say, you don't even want to know what happened in our apartment. You weren't even there, Bernice. Yeah. And the SWAT team came in, and they just dropped these little tidbits here and there. I was like, what are you talking about? And they wouldn't tell me. And they'd be like, and now finally, I guess I got the whole story. Yeah, I don't know what they were supposed to do with those shotguns and stuff. And man, they were I wonder what the nice. lady told. She probably told like that you she were going to murder someone. Yeah, she was such a sweet old lady, man. That's How do you know it was her? <laughs> Uh, it was definitely her. She was the <laughs> old lady next door. Like I, and then there was a huge gap between me and the next house, so it must have been her. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm sure you were screaming your head off. Probably. Yo, it was it was one of the loudest. You were sleeping. What were you doing? Yeah, I was just listening to some music and sleeping, taking yeah, a nap. Uh, this guy a has an nap. issue with doing that. But um, either way, now has that negatively impacted your perception of the police no that's, that's the other thing question. too but would i have handled it a little differently as well like how i definitely got the perspective of somebody like it definitely felt like i got my rights violated like it definitely felt like i shouldn't have allowed them to just barge in and come in without any explanation like think about it if some old lady next door just called the police with no evidence no proof there's nothing what if i was just... stuck inside a house like that no, but th what I'm saying is you're basing these things off of the, your action off of a story of another But she individual. probably said, I think there's a murder going on. Yeah, but what's your proof? But if I, I was in there, what if she said, he's going crazy, something bad's going to happen to that little girl in there. She just made that up. No, that's 100% agree. But how that. do we teeter on the lines of requiring warrants respecting people's privacy I personally not think that but is that the police's fault the police no no I'm not blaming the police fault that. I'm actually posing this question out there is how do we answer, tackle the question of privacy versus personally I think here's a problem mm. I think in an ideal world nobody would have a problem with the police coming in if they're innocent and like oh, they yeah, wouldn't no, care that's why, yes. but the problem comes with a layer of complexity with police like corruption and like people maybe using excessive force nowadays, etc. Excessive force and that's where the problem comes. Doing all sorts I don't of really stuff. think if in a situation like that where it was like all decent cops who come in just to make sure respond to a call, I really don't. If that's how all cops were, etc., like there were no problems with police in this country, then I think most people would be okay with people coming in their house. Yeah, but I definitely will say I had an issue. Um, I, I, de I felt think... like I had an issue after. Wow. I de felt, I literally felt violated. Like I was telling Trevor, like uh, right after we were just laughing, we were laughing about the, <laughs> we are laughing about the entire situation uh, the entire time uh, after. But I, the one thing we were laughing at was like, yeah, dude, I definitely felt violated. Like how did we just allow some person to just waltz in here and just tell us what to do and own How'd our you place? Feel about it? But if you were an officer, would you do anything differently if you got that call? No, I think it didn't. No, but that's what I mean. How do we? That's my question I'm posing is how do we respect privacy versus Who cares about your violated feelings? So that's your perspective on it. Well, for this situation, yes. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know someone, if somebody <laughs> is telling me that there's a hostage situation or whatever <laughs> that lady was saying, it's obviously <laughs> some crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, then as an officer, I'm going to have to see what's in there, whether you like it or not. Okay. Um, that's what what do you guys think? Yeah, would you, I agree would, you, with you. would you just be like, nah, close the door and leave? Yeah. If you're going to get shot. We need that lawyer TikTok guy that's blowing up now to give us some evidence if you ever want to pass this on to him about what do you do in terms of not not feeling violated in terms of handling that situation. Just get over your feelings for this situation. <laughs> for this situation. For this situation, that's fine. Okay, say they come in, they barge in, a, they find uh, marijuana. Why do you have and that, they, No, not mine. Let's say it's somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Sounds it's a different situation. They, take, they find somebody's marijuana, the guy gets like a year of prison. Well, that does, that, does that 
actually allowed to happen. I, I'm sure there's some... Uh, we're not lawyers, but I'm sure there's some statue of, like... Yeah, again, that Benita and I already said that if we got the call as, and we were officers, we would still need to see what's in the house. I was an officer. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think, so write it in the comments. And, Herman, we need a definitive answer from you. Like, Would you they... or would you not barge into that room if you got a call saying... Somebody's getting hurt in the room next door. I, as a police officer, would like the ability to investigate a call of a hostage. Bro, how are you going to do that? Hey, sweetheart, you got a hostage in there? No, yeah, I would. Um... That's what I'm saying. I would. So what I could would... the officer do differently to not yeah, make you feel violated? He walks could... oh, in. He needs question. to see what's going on in there. Is that's it his really fault? Good question. Um, he could ask to for me to open the door and look inside before he walks in there. With all their okay, guns give you a little chance. So you to didn't tell like how we said it very aggressively. I just don't like the fact that they it just sounds like a barge pansy. in mm -hmm. without any sort of evidence or warrant. What if she was like instructed by you to climb out the window or something? Who instructed me? What if there was a hostage in there? Uh huh. And you told her. It's like someone's at the door. You go climb out the window. They need to get in your apartment before you she leaves. Why couldn't they just surround the place and look at the window? Why would they do that? That's even more work. Mm, but at least it doesn't violate the privacy well, outside my home. Who what cares if about your privacy the for this one? In the time that you're stalling. Exactly. I, as our current state stands, unfortunately, it's just the the way the payment you pay the payment you pay to be a part of a society. So I don't have a better solution than allowing. Yeah, them there's to no me. solution to that one. The thing so is the real do... culprit was the lady who made that call. Yeah, she... Not a culprit. She's the one who could have been changed she... in the system. Was that possible? She could have saved somebody. Of course. Saved Herman looked like a, probably for our okay, old white lady, the, a terrorist. Given the banging, the yelling, the creeping outside of somebody's window, that's a pretty warrant. I'm not blaming her whatsoever. I, I don't either. I know you're psycho. <laughs> you're probably crazy banging on Sean's window. Ah, like crazy <laughs> mania. I was so pissed that I couldn't play and chill and play video games. You know, I was so pissed. Jesus, man. But either way, uh, yeah, I don't have any better solution for that. Okay. Okay, let's loop back around to. I think that's it for the house topic. We totally took that around. We took it okay, right. the Maybe wrong we can way. Change that topic to that topic. Please. We're, we're just talk, calling it the SWAT team. The topic. The SWAT team story. Sure. Okay. That'll right. be the SWAT team What's story. What's the next topic?